comes us. <laughs> well, we bid you welcome this morning. We thank you for joining us. Are we good, Mel? We thank that you have a choice in the matter with where you can worship. So if you're tuning in this morning, we want to thank you for joining us here at Keystone Church. If you're on your way, come on down and bring your mask and join us in worship today. It's September the 4th. We're more than halfway through this new year or this year and we're back to school and things are seemingly, seemingly returning to normal. So if you, sir or ma'am, have any inclination of wanting to gather together with the saints, why don't you come on down? Why don't you join us in person? Why don't you lend your voice to us this morning as we prepare to serve the Lord on this Sunday morning? I want to read to you a, a text from Psalm 95. Psalm 95, beginning at verse number one. Here's what it says. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great king above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his. For he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God, and we are his people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Our God and our Father in heaven, as we come this morning, we want to sing a new song. We are your people, the sheep of your pasture. We pray, God, that we would not harden our hearts when we hear your voice but that we would invite you into this space. And whether you're joining us virtually or in person, Lord, come on in and make up, take up residence within. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Won't you do me a favor? Won't you stand to your feet and let us sing hymn number 56. Hymn number 56, to God be the glory. Hymn number 56, to God be the glory. Go ahead, Mel, next one. And do slideshow for us. To God be the glory, great things he has done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son, who yielded his life and atonement for sin and opened the life gate that all may go in. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he have done. O oh, perfect redemption, the purchase of blood to every believer, the promise of God, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus, a pardon re Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he have done. Oh, things he have taught us. Great things he has done. And great our rejoicing through Jesus the Son. But purer and higher and greater will be our wonder, our transport. When Jesus we see, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. 
Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great. One more time. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son and give him the glory. Great things he has done. Amen. Stay standing. Brother Tony's coming to read for us our responsive reading, number 646. Number 646 in your hymnal. Right. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And, and the, the peace, peace of God, God which, which transcends, transcends all understanding, understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. And the peace of God will be with you. Amen. All right. Well, you can stand or be seated now as we prepare for our congregational song, number 526. Whatever you feel comfortable doing is fine, but grab your hymnal and turn over to 526. Now, I want to say this, that on account of our beginning, I was thinking about songs that talk about hope, because today is going to be the inauguration of me sharing, of us sharing messages from the theme of hope and one of the songs that jumped out off the, that leapt off the page for me was none other than the solid rock. So, you know, I, I can't think of many more songs that capture uh, the hope and the help we have in Jesus Christ, our solid rock. So when you sing this song this morning, I hope it keys. I hope you key in on the words, the words that reflect upon the hopefulness we have in him and how he can be trusted to stand upon in moments like these. Amen. 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 526, the solid rock. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest strength, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. Everybody, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, his, 
my hope and stay. Come on, sing it. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the last time. On Christ the solid rock we stand, all of the ground is sinking sand, all of the ground, I lied, one more time, sinking sand, one more time, on Christ the solid rock we stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Amen. Listen, I don't know about you, but I'm thankful that when the shifts under your feet, when the ground shifts under your feet, and you felt that before. When life, when life moves and you weren't prepared to move or when the car stops and you weren't prepared for it to come to an end, you keep moving. The inertia of your body keeps going. It's only Christ who holds you. Right. It's only him that keeps you stable and steady. And I'm thankful to God today that I have somebody. I didn't say something. I said I have somebody I can stand upon who's never let me down who's never abandoned me, who's kept his promises. And we can trust him. Listen, it's good to see you. And I'm glad you decided to join us this morning in worship this first Sunday in September. Amen. This rainy day. I'm thankful that the weather continues to be agreeable. Amen. We are getting an elongated summer. And I'm not complaining. I'm not mad about it. I'm, I'm just, I'm grateful. We can still open the windows because we know what is on the way. I want to move into our time of sharing with you some announcements, <clears throat> followed by some prayer requests uh, as well. Amen. First and foremost, let me just say this. Look at, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at Brother Reggie here. Look at Sister Fanshawn here. Praise God. You can't see online. But I can lay my eyes upon both of them. Praise the Lord. Amen. Whom the Lord has delivered. Whom the Lord. Oh, my goodness. And look at that. <laughs> Sister B, Sister Annie, good to see you. Good to see you and to know that you're what praise God. Look here. These folk is showing you online that you got time. Come on down and get in. Especially today as we will be observing the Lord's Supper. Praise the Lord. I know that's important to you. Amen. So won't you join us in that in a few moments? Praise God. Every Sunday at 11 o'clock, we kick it off here in our Sunday service, both online and in person. And uh, we, we strive to go for an hour, hour and 15, and to send you on your way. Praise the Lord. Sunday school is at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning. Zoom online and in person for the Zoom online for the women and men are 9 a.m., 9.15 in the fellowship hall. I needed 9.15 this morning. I needed 9.15 this morning. Praise the Lord. Monday, but not tomorrow. Let me say that again. Monday, but not tomorrow is our recovery ministry. Tomorrow's a holiday. So go on and spend time with your family. Go on and spend time with your loved ones and celebrate Labor Day tomorrow. But on Monday, normally from 6 until 7.30, our recovery ministry begins and ends at 6 until 7.30. All right. On Wednesday night from 6, I'm, I'm sorry, from 7 until 8.30, Pastor Delario has been leading and loving us through the book of Isaiah 
for Bible study and prayer. And he did so in Mississippi. <laughs> Those of you that don't know, Pastor D went down. I know I don't know if you're tuning in, Pastor. We love you, man. Say hi to your to your parents this morning, to your sister. We send you greetings from Chicago. We hope you are well. Uh, but Pastor Delario led Bible study from Mississippi. That's the brilliance of technology. Amen. That's the joy of technology is that no matter where we are, we can still be connected. Praise Amen. the Lord. This Thursday from 10 until 12, this Thursday from 10 until 12 is our food pantry ministry. Uh, please uh, volunteer if you're able. But if you know somebody who is food insecure, if you know somebody who's got a shortage, got more months than they got money, there's a lot of us that way. Got more months than they got money. Why don't you send them down here to grab a bag of food from our food pantry ministry? I learned this morning, Pastor Delario tipped us off, that indeed today is First Lady Sunday. Today we honor all First Ladies and we have who have shown their love and support for our ministry. So from Sister Joan to Sister Millicent to my wife Shania to... Laverla, to the countless women who have stood with their partners, stood with our pastors. We honor you this morning. Amen. We thank God for your ministry. We thank God for your love and we thank God uh, for you. And finally, this past Monday, we were fortunate to go over to come down to the church, Brother Tony and Delario and Sister Dorothy and, and Don and Mel and, and, and several of us, Sister Joan, we, we, we packed bags and we, and we put some supplies into the hands of students at Tilton. We walked over and delivered them uh, to the principal and to their, to their coordinator. And I wish you could have seen, I, I was fortunate, Joan and I were fortunate to go into some of the classrooms and to send greetings from Keystone and to share with them our love and our support for this upcoming academic school year. Listen, we wanna say thank you to the Chicago Partnership. Amen. Pray Amen. Yes, indeed. Sister Margaret as well, amen. Um, we, we, we were, thank you, bro. We, um, we were just, I mean, they lit up, amen. It, it was good to see them excited. Uh, and, 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 and then we learned as well um, that there's the need is still present to get back into Tilton. Praise the Lord. So our ongoing conversation with our tutoring, hopefully we can breathe new life and a new inspiration into standing with our students and loving our neighbors over at Tilton. Amen. That's exciting. That's exciting. That's exciting. Praise God. Can you hand me that birthday list over there? Amen. Uh, that's all that I have for announcements. I, I don't know if there's any more that have come to my attention. And um, if there are any announcements that are in the chat, please be sure to place them there. And we will see them as well before uh, our time ends for today. I would like for you also, if you're on the chat, thank you, sir. To, uh, to chime in if you have a prayer request, if you have a concern, uh, then we will, we will notice them and we will pray for them. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. I, I would like to draw from memory some of the prayer requests that I know to be true and also ask that you would... Um, that I would also like to pray in general for the health and well-being of our church, for those who stand bereaved, those in need of healing, and those that are rejoicing in God. Amen. So I want to first and foremost acknowledge our, those that are in the healing process, who I can see and who I can see sitting before me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. On behalf of um, Keystone, we're excited to see brother, brother Reggie. To see Sister Fanshawn, to see Sister Annie Lott Jackson, to see uh, Sister Rita, 
uh, to see and know that God is at work and then through you is a joy to our hearts. We thank God for you. We thank God for God's continual healing power for Brother Andre as well, as he has continued to seek treatment for his condition. I also want to lift up before you today uh, uh, Sister Addie's own children and uh, uh, um, the work that they're doing with children. There's been some disturbance there, but we ask that God to work in those situations. We want to lift up this morning our first ladies as well. Uh, my wife and Sister Laverla. We also want to ask that God would continue to look upon the bereaved. Thank you, Melvin. This is a note here from Sister uh, Vernadette. She says, dear friends, thank you so much for your thoughts and prayers and monetary gift. You and it was much appreciated. You are forever in my heart. Perhaps you sent a lovely card or sat quietly in a chair. Perhaps you sent beautiful flowers. If so, we saw them there. Perhaps you sent or spoke kind words, as any friend could say. Perhaps you were not there at all, just thought of us that day. Whatever you did to console the heart, we thank you so much, whatever the part. So we lift up Bernadette and continue to lift up her family. We have another note here as well. Um, gratefully acknowledging and thanking, and thanking you for your kind expression of sympathy. Uh, the Loggins family, Sister Linda and her family uh, send, their, send their, their gratitude as well. So we are acknowledging, we'd like to acknowledge, and we want to ask that you would continue to pray for them uh, and the loss of their loved one. That, that, that void, that empty chair uh, is real. It is real. Uh, and finally, we want to rejoice in God and his goodness and allowing us to partner and to be creative and thinking about future partnerships in our neighborhood. Last but not least, you all saw the news, and I was getting text alerts from Brother Andre and Melvin alike on Wednesday to hear about just a, a, a spat of violence in and through uh, West Garfield right here. Started on Wednesday with the shooting at the liquor store and, and continues on to be ongoing here on West End uh, and, on, uh, and on Maypole. So let us be asking God uh, to, uh, to intervene and to cancel this demonic activity of gun violence uh, right here in our neighborhood. Amen. That's what it is. It's demonic activity uh, and, 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 and senseless violence uh, that continues to plague. We want to ask God to cover our babies with the blood and to ask God to look upon the needs of our church. I also want to ask you to keep praying for our seniors Sister Tripp, Sister Bess, Sister, uh, Sister um, Mahone, and Sister Mekshan, as well as all of our seniors, Sister Bell and Brother Bell, all of those who tune in online, all of those who stand in need of prayer. We're asking that you would remember them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Sing this song with me now. Sing this song with me, number 323, and we'll look to the Lord in just a moment. I'm sorry. 343. 343, huh? Amazing grace. Amazing grace. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see verse two. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear, and grace my fears really. 
How precious did that grace appear the hour I first As we hand is bowed as every eye is closed. Our God and our Father in heaven, we say thank you this morning that you woke us in our right minds with the mind stayed on you. And not only that, oh God, you gave us the wherewithal to gather our senses and come to church to tune out the world and fine tune our thinking on you. Oh God, we ask that you would continue your care upon your people here at Keystone. That by your grace, you would forgive sin and help us to stand apart from it. And Father, I pray, Father, that your hand would lead and guide us in this ministry towards those green pastures you call us toward. We thank you this morning, Lord, that you are in the healing business, that you know what we stand in need of, and you are able to meet the needs of those who stand. So, God, I'm lifting up this morning to you, Sister Iris, and her ongoing recovery from surgery. I'm asking you, oh, Lord, to continue to speak to her and to invest in her in ways that go beyond the doctor's care. Lord Jesus, while you're at it, won't you look on Fanshawn and Reggie, whom you have given an, 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 an abundant amount of grace, help, and strength to, to get to church today. Oh, God, we thank you that standing and standing there this morning was a, was a wonderful way to rejoice in you, to see them walking through those doors, to see them standing in the midst of us, to know that you are working in ways that, that go beyond reason. We say thank you this morning. We thank you for Sister Jackson this morning, for how you have brought her through her uh, into her recovery this morning and brought her to the house of the Lord as well. We ask that you would continue your care upon your people this morning. Those that are not here this morning who are tuning in online and who are looking to you for answers. We thank you this morning, Lord Jesus, for how you settle us upon your word and how you give us the reassurance of your presence in our lives. Truth be told, we can't make it without you. We live in tough times. And we won't be duped by counterfeits, God. We can't depend on nobody else. We know we can depend upon you. And so, God, I'm asking that you would continue your care and support for Brother Andre. I'm asking, God, that you would care and support your people, Lord Jesus, who have unspoken prayer requests. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would look upon those that are downcast, depressed, discouraged for whatever reason. I'm asking, Lord Jesus, that you would lift up their bowed down heads, that you would speak a word of life to them in the mighty name of Jesus. We're asking, Father, that you would send revival through the streets of West Garfield Park as Satan has sought to discourage and to bring about demonic activity through these streets. I'm asking God that you would send revival, that you would send revival through these streets, Lord Jesus, to stem the, 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 the spirit of death that has so plagued this place. I'm asking Father God that you would allow us to be a beacon of hope in our neighborhood. A, a, a sanctuary of salvation, Lord Jesus, in this place, on this corner, for your glory and for our own good. Oh God, we here at Keystone Church, we're willing and able. We need bodies, we need workers, but we are willing and able to lead, to go where you lead us, Lord Jesus. So Lord, let us be led by you into Tilton. We thank you for allowing us to, to partner with our friends over there. We thank you for the lives that we were able to touch this week. We ask that you would allow us to do more in the months ahead. We're praying, God, for strategy and for, and for, and for a sense of, 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 of reassurance of your presence as we take every step with you. We ask, Lord God, that you would satisfy us with your presence, that you would grant us your marching orders. 
And God, we ask, Lord, that you would help us as we continue to, uh, to, to, to think about our own lives and what you would have us to do, how you want us to serve. We ask that you would give us the courage to speak truth to power wherever injustice abounds. We're asking God that you would grant us help with our own sinful dilemmas that we struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis. That you would remember our families that are being torn asunder. That you would cover our babies with the blood of Jesus as they go to and fro from school. That God, you would shut down the liquor stores that are pe feeding poison to our people. That you would stem the drug tide. That you would give our politicians wisdom and dignity and instruction from on high. We pray, God, that you would grant us your peace, Lord Jesus, as we find that there has been struggles all around. Oh, God, I'm praying that you would also help us to rejoice in you and allow us to do it again, to rejoice in you, that you would satisfy our needs, that you would care for us in ways that go beyond our own reason. And finally, God, Help us to magnify the hope we have in you. Lord Jesus, there's no other help. We, we, we can't find hope in anyone else or anywhere else than in you this morning. Yeah. So, Lord God, we pray that you would incline your ear to our direction and hear our prayer. These things we pray in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And thank God. We're continuing on in prayer uh, for Brother Stan. Uh, he wasn't feeling this well. We're also continuing on in prayer uh, for Brother John, who's also under the weather. Holy Spirit brought him to mind as well. And for all of you and all of those uh, who are under the weather, amen, that God would strengthen you and care for you uh, this day. All right. There's a lot to cover. But before we get there, I want to ask that you would um, consider... Let me do this for just a moment um, as well. We're going to back that thing up and we're going to go back. Go back one slide, Mel. Let's sing Amazing Grace again as our ushers come forward. Don, Tony, would you do me a favor? Would you grab the offering plates and let's have a moment here to sing Amazing Grace and receive our offering this morning. Now, for you that are online, you can you can send in your gifts through Zale. KeystoneBaptist.Church. Praise the Lord. 343. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Through many dangers, verse 4. Through many dangers, toils, and snares I have already come tis grace hath brought me safe thus far and grace Will me home. You can hum that a little bit as I pray. Lord, for these gifts, we are grateful for allowing us to gather them into your storehouse. We say thank you. We thank you, God, that these gifts allow us to continue our work. Though it is undone, use these gifts to advance our cause and to spread wide the name of Jesus. To those in this neighborhood, to those that are in this city, 
to those that are beyond. So we thank you for the gift and the giver. We give it with a cheerful heart now in Jesus' name. Amen. I thank God that Brother Tony is here with me today. Amen. Amen. Well, Pastor D, I know you're down there enjoying yourself. You know how it can be pulling all the pieces together and remembering everything that needs to be said. Now, on that note, I won't say something. Say something, something. Something. <laughs> Tomorrow is Sister Rita's birthday. All right now. Praise the Lord. So we celebrate you, sis. We thank God for you. Through the years of investment and all that you have given to this church, we honor you. And we pray that God would be with you tomorrow and every day. Amen. You want to sing? You want to sing? Let's, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and sing. Who? Come quick. Do you want to sing this morning, mother? Say again. I'm confusing. Let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Sister Rita. Happy birthday to you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. And if the spirit is moving you to do so, we welcome you to come on down. Amen. Amen. Praise God. If it had not been, praise God.
Look, I don't know about you, but I, I know exactly where I'd be. I know I'd be, I'd be lost without a cause. I'd be, I'd be in a bad state, brother Tony. I'd be up a creek without a paddle. But I'm so grateful this morning. He knows my name. He knows who we are. Hallelujah. <laughs> How wonderful it is to be known by God. How wonderful it is to be kept by him. Look at choir. Y'all thank you for your impromptu Amen. ministry. It tells us that there's great talent in this place. And it's not unrecognized. I learned this week, Brother Melvin called me on the phone and he said, look here, somebody just drove past the church and said, every time I drive past this church, something moves me. And I just want to I just want to give a gift. But I don't know how to give. Listen, God is at work. There, there's someone else here on this this sheet of paper. I can't see it. It's on the podium here. But somebody else wants to partner with what we're doing. And it's because what God is at that God is at. Well, don't be. You, you ought not be discouraged by what you see. Mm -hmm. You ought not be discouraged by what you see. God is behind the scenes. God is at work in and in the midst of us. It may not get the spotlight or the ABC Channel 7 news, but there's a lot to be grateful for. This young lady wants to partner with churches, come out and set up and advertise some series, some services that they want to do. She just wants to partner, and that's the name of the game in this day and era saints if you ain't we can't do it all alone god never did god never intended for us to do this work on our own amen well the hour is well spent and uh, i've got a lot of ground to cover because we do have communion today so let me get into it in this moment and invite you to bow with me uh in a word of prayer Praise the Lord. Our God and our Father in heaven, we pause this moment to give you praise you. for the express purpose of your divine presence in our lives. If it had not been for you, if it had not been for you on our side, some of us know where we'd be. And it's on account of that, God, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We know exactly where we'd be. Hey, but you stepped in anyway. And on account of that, we say thank you. I pray now that you would grant me preaching power. I pray now, God, that you would give me your presence. That you would help me, oh Lord, to make sense of these words that you have given to me, that you downloaded in my heart. And I pray, God, that your people would be blessed. I ask that you would render me an oracle for Jesus Christ. Help me to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth regarding you and your word. And I pray you would do all of this good work for your glory and for our good. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm thankful this morning that in the years that have transpired in our lives, we know that God has been at work in us, not because of how good we are or what we've done, but because he has embedded in us seeds of hope. And I'd like to take this moment to provide you with a little bit of prolegomena. These are introductory remarks about the direction of sermon series that I'd like for us to go in the next few months or however long sees fit, however, the Lord long, however long the Lord sees fit. You see, hope to me is not just wishful thinking. Oh, I wish the sun would come out today. Eh? No, that's wishful thinking. Looks like rain is here to stay. Oh, or, or, or this is, oh, I hope that I can win a lot of money. That, 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 that's not hope either. That's, that's wishful thinking. Hope to me, hope biblically speaking, is anticipation of something good down the road that can be both realized in heaven and on earth. 
It's a destination, as Pastor Delario preached a few weeks ago. And in this season and in this time in which we have come through, I sense that God wants to embed more hope in us. It's the expectation of a good outcome. It's the, it's the, it's the tangible good. But destination reached. And God holds out the hope for us because he himself is the embodiment of hope in the word. In the coming days and weeks, I hope we will glean from the scriptures hopeful passages from normal people who defied odds, who threw caution to the wind, who were compelled to hold on to faith in God no matter what the world threw at them. And I'm going to tell you why I, you, you, why we're going to go, because I need it. I need it. And so do you. In our first installment this morning, I like to title this text, What to Do When God Can't Be Found. What to do when God can't be found. You see, because the 6th century BCE, Jeremiah laments the fall of Jerusalem. A tough moment in the life of the kingdom because at the center of because Jerusalem was the city of life. The people of God were deported. And the smoldering ruins were ablaze all around him. Jerusalem had been destroyed. Jeremiah writes words in the book of Lamentations in order to show me and you that things were not good. The landscape was full of destruction. The ruins, the, the stones were lying on top of each other. It's a tough scene. Yet in keeping with the prediction of the prophet, what else should they have expected? They had lived lives in, a, in, in direct disobedience to God. Jeremiah spent an entire book telling people, get right, God. Get right. He's a coming. And they ignored that advice. Jeremiah had warned them to repent, return, make good on their fidelity to Yahweh on numerous occasions. And now the outcome had reached their full maturity. These texts, this text tells a story this morning, saints, that when God is hard to find, what we have is hope in him. All we have sometimes to cling on to in life, when, 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 when it seems as though everything around us is in ruins, when it seems as though all the things we are encountering are in disarray, what we have is our hope in God. I'd like to take you to the text of Lamentations chapter 3, and I'd like for us to hear the words of chapter 3 as I read them to you now, beginning at verse number 19. This is Jeremiah the prophet in Lamentations chapter 3, beginning in verse in number 19, he says here in verse 19, I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remembered them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the great, the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him. To those who, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke while he is young. You may be seated. 
I'd like to tag this text in our extreme in our exchange. What to do when God can't be found? What to do when God can't be found? Jeremiah had seen and witnessed the scene. When Jerusalem and all of its surroundings were in ruins, the writer finds hope in God. And it compels me to hear, when I read this chapter in its entirety, I want to recommend you do that. But when you read Lamentations chapter 3, you can't help but hear that when life collapses, hope can still be found in God's faithful presence. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. We may be people who have experienced the destruction and the downturn of a couple of years of hardship. We have. Perhaps we are longing to figure out why we are going through such difficult circumstances and how we can find hope when it seems as though he's nowhere present. Well, in this text, we find out that hope can be found because we are able to find a different outcome in spite of something that we have not experienced. In other words, we find hope in God when it seems as though God can't be found by awaiting God's arrival in three unique areas in our lives. It's in patience, it's in presence, and it's in our petitions. God can be found in patience. God can be found in his presence, partner with, partnering with, and God can be found in our petitions. When we, when we pray to God, we can find him. This text is tailored to teach us, first of all, that we find hope in God because we have yet to understand what it means to have perspective. It would be hard to compare our lives to a city that experienced destruction unless you and I are someone who has come from a war zone. It's hard to wrap our minds about what's happening in Lamentations unless you have been to a place where you see bullet holes and shotgun shells all around. It's, it's hard for us to comprehend what it's like to be in this situation unless we are familiar with what's going on over in the Ukraine. It's, it's difficult to, for us to fathom what life is like for us unless we have been brought out of a war-torn country. But this is the setting for the readers. They've lost it all. Everything they had grown accustomed to, everything that they had cherished, everything that they had longed for, worked for, hoped for, was gone. It's kind of like the migrants who leave their country searching for a new place to live so that their survival is not fraught and uh, is not fraught with challenge. And in this vein, we read the words of chapter three as the words of a funeral dirge. It's a eulogy, Brother Tony. Well. Chapter three is a eulogy. It's, it's, it's words capturing the funeral of a city, of a people. They're painful to hear. The writer says that his health, his hopes, and his fears are spiraling downward, and he has begun to despair. It's not unexpected because you and I have been ripped from our communities as of late because of the silent unseen killer that lurked at our doors in the person of COVID. I mean, we, 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 know, we know a little bit. We know a little bit of what it's like to have lives interrupted and to lose the ones we love and to not have the familiar anymore. We, we kind of have some sense of this. And it should not escape our recognition that, 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 that indeed these were the difficult times that the people of God were experiencing as well. But these folks were guilty. They were guilty of ignoring the warning signs that Jeremiah had given. They were guilty of overlooking the part they played in going after other gods. And when Yahweh decided that enough was enough, he sent them into exile and raised the city. Kind of like when your parent has decided that they had enough, right? When you were younger, or maybe you were a parent, and your, and your, and your, chi and your child is acting up in the store. And they've been begging you and begging you. And you've been telling them, you better act right. You better get right. Sister, Sister Edie, you know, when you're telling your child and you're saying, you better, you, better, you better straighten up. Now, I'm not playing with you. 
They had enough disrespect, and now they was about to cut your behind. Guilty as charged <laughs> was Israel. But guilty or not, they were desolate. Have you ever been without something? Have you ever been bereft, Brother Tony, of all your basic needs? Have you ever, have you ever met a man? I got a friend of mine who is a CPD officer right now, but for a season in his life, he lived in his car. He's a man of God. He's trusted the Lord, but he lived in his car for a long time. And folk didn't know it. You wouldn't know it if you saw him, that he had that in his background. But there are moments in our all, all of our lives when we look back and we wonder how God could bring us through. At times when we feel as though the world is collapsing all around us. And this is the experience of the writer. Listen to some of the scene. He says in verses one through three, God attacked me and he drove me from light to dark. What else is he saying? In verses four, four through eight, he said, he shriveled up my skin and he has shattered my bones. He put me in a dungeon and has weighed me down with chains. And verse 9 through 13, he says, he don't put an obstacle in my path. He don't put a bear, a lion. He's done shot arrows at me. In verse 14 of this same chapter, he says, he's made me to feel shame of being, I'm the laughing stock of all my people. In verse 15 through 16, he said, he done made me eat bitter herbs. Now, I can't even enjoy the food that I taste. Life is miserable. What do I do when it seems as though God can't be found? And finally, in verse 17 through 20, he said, he done take away my peace. I ain't even got no prosperity anymore. I have nothing left. I can hear Marvin Gaye in this crying out, make me want to holler the way they do my life. Yeah. Makes me want to holler. <laughs> <laughs> And through it all, we see that even here, the writer is learning some patience. I say all that because the scene shifts. Verse 19 begins with, I remember. You see, in this life, we can have all of our comforts stripped away. We can have all of our hopes dashed to pieces. We can be, we can be, we can be, we can be torn asunder because of a health diagnosis. We can be, we can be losing of our jobs and relationships and loved ones. And, and, and yet, in a moment's notice, we can remember <laughs> who God is and what he has done. The Bible says that in verse 19, he begins with, I remember. I remember these things. And he begins to evaluate all that he knows to be true about Yahweh. Listen to the text. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember. He says it twice. I, I remember. I remember. And my soul is downcast within me. But this I call to mind. And therefore, I have hope. Saints, what I would like to suggest to you for point number one is we find hope in God because we understand perspective. He wants us to learn perspective. He has a moment of clarity, saying, You ever had that aha moment, light bulb thing popped off, Robert? When the light bulb turns on and he says to himself, you know what? You know, all of these verses are true. But I remember. I remember how kindness was mine by God. I remember when Obed-Edom was picking me up out of a pit. With soft towels on them. I remember when I was in a pit and the Lord brought me out. I remember, I remember when I was in depression, Jeremiah was saying. I remember when I was depressed and the Lord delighted in me. I remember. I'm going to spoil this movie for you if you haven't seen it. I'm sorry. But me, my wife, and my boys went to the movies yesterday and saw Thor. And um, um, the antagonist in the movie was nobody 
was, was a nobody who, because of his suffering and pain, decided that worship and fealty that he paid to God, to the God he served, didn't work. He said, I'm worshiping God for no reason. He determined that the gods don't care about those who serve them. But in the end, it was love that he lacked, and love is what ultimately made the difference. Not just love for God, but this love for us that often helps us make it through. The point of the matter is this, saints, sometimes in this life we have to realize that the perspective God wants us to have through suffering comes over time. And the writer of this book tells us that he recalls, he summons to mind, he pulls out of the ground. He relates to the fact that God had been good to him in his life and he could have hope. Crumbling of a life. Perhaps yours is a painful and disintegrating experience. We may feel as though God doesn't care, but he's, but he's there to help us. Hallelujah. Some point you have to realize not only this, not only that God is there, that he's willing and able to bring us through. That's point number one. Point number two is this. I got to move along. We find hope in God first and foremost because he gives us the chance to have perspective. Secondly, we find hope in God because uh, because even when we haven't experienced his presence, when we remember his presence, we remember his presence. Verse 22, he says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So I'm going to say the Lord is my portion. I will wait for him. Have you, you've heard me say it times and times again that I wonder what life would have been like for Charles Darwin if his boy didn't die. Let me say that again. You, you, you do know Charles Darwin who wrote that book, The Evolution of the Species, right? The one who said that we came from monkeys, the ones that say that we evolved from apes, the one who says that we are but a product of millions of years of evolution. I wonder what would happen if Charles Darwin didn't lose his son at an early age. Uh, you see, pain has the potential to tell us, God, you're not good. Why would you allow my boy to die? Why did you let this happen? Why has this city been destroyed? Why am I got cancer? Why did I divorce? Why did I not have a child? Sometimes pain can push us in a direction that we didn't anticipate going. Pain preaches a better, uh, sometimes in life, saints, pain preaches a more convincing word. And until we can gain perspective for our pain, sometimes it drives us away from God. Verse 1 through 18, our classic funeral dirge. In the prophetic material. And thank God the writer was being honest. This hurts. This don't feel good. But to me, it sounds as though he was experiencing abandonment. It reminds me of the book by Ellie Weissel, Night. Anybody ever read the book by, by Ellie Weissel called Night? He was the Jewish man that was in uh, the, the he was in he was in uh, concentration camps. In the book, he talks about he talks about his experience at Auschwitz, one of the concentration one of the concentration camps. But 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 Ellie Weissel notes that one of the men were in line as they were getting ready to head into a gas chamber. And he says to me, he says, I shall never forget. He says, behind me, I hear the same man asking, for God's sake, where is God? Where is God? For God's sake, where is he? And from within me, I heard a voice answer. Where is he? This is where, hanging from the gallows. What circumstances have you faced in life that, that, that caused you the same reaction? What child, what, was, it, was it a child gone too soon? A diagnosis that came when life was getting good? A racial trauma incident where you somehow were told your chocolate skin was somehow less than absolutely beautiful? These moments render us alone. And like the time I was in venture. Hello. I said venture. One time I was in venture and I got separated from my mama. 
I had to go to the front of the store and find a customer service agent and call for my mama on the house. I said, mama, where are you? I don't know where you are. Can you come pick me up at the front of the store? The good news is, verse 22, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. It means even on days when the writer felt attacked, shriveled up, obstructive, shame filled, stepped on, full of anxiety, by the time morning comes, he could know that God would return to greet him. Hallelujah. That, that God every morning would wake up to greet him. Because he knew that God would reassure him on a daily basis. I want to tell somebody today, I don't know what you're going through, been through, or heading to. God is new every morning, and his presence will provide for you, will bring you through. I don't know about you, but it's time for you and I to take each day and give thanks to God, even if things ain't going right. It don't matter. Things may be going all kind of which ways. Give him thanks anyway. You ought to wake up every morning before you turn on the TV, before you put your feet on the ground, before you tackle the day, you ought to tell God, thank you for the new mercies. Thank you. Thank you for the new mercies you've provided me today. While this life is a roller coaster ride, Unexpected turns, one thing can be sure of, it's God's good presence in your life each and every day. There's three things I want you to know in this text. It's number one, that we find hope in God because we have to learn perspective. Number two, we find hope in God when we remember his presence is new every morning. Every morning. Every morning, Greg? Every morning. Every morning. And then thirdly, we find hope in God when anticipating an answer to our prayers. He's going to answer you. <laughs> Don't stop praying. <laughs> Don't stop praying. He's going to answer you. Oh, yeah. Yes, he will. The older I get, the more I realize the Lord is good to those whose hope is in him. Look at verse 25. The Lord is good. I'm, I'm just reading it from the text. The Bible says the Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the Lord, or for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke while he is young. The older I get, the more I realize uh, that it is good, uh, that the Lord is good to those whose hope is in him. But it's his goodness that we often fail to recognize. I need a little help. I need a little help, Mother Rita. So, Alicia, I need a little bit of help <clears throat> uh, to know what it is. So, so that's why verse 26 is very important to me. He says, it is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. When I did some research and I began to do some terms, look up the terminology, because in this, in this series on hope, I hope to bring forth the, the lexical, um, the, the words where hope shows up and you'll let those texts drive my sermons. Well, here's the Old Testament term. And the word for hope in the Old Testament is yakal, yakal. And what it really means is just to wait. It is to wait with expectation. It is to wait patiently. Hope means to wait. And what are we doing when we pray to God? We are waiting for an answer. Listen, God is going to answer your prayers. Now, 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 he may say yes, he may say no, or he may say wait. But he's going to answer one of those three ways. And indeed, as we think about this now, in other words, it is, it is, in other words, because hope and waiting are so closely related, we're being called to wait quietly and to wait in the Lord. But we live in a popcorn culture. We live in a culture that can put, that wants it, wants it, right? We want to, just like this. 
We have to have it. We can find it. We can have it delivered. We can Zoom with someone in Kampala or in Sydney. Everything in our world teaches us that we can have it and we can have it our way. Now catch this. I'm not saying that that's necessarily a bad thing, but when we start praying and asking God for specific things and seems as though he's not answering, we tend to get a little hasty. I'm not talking to nobody in here today. I'm not, I'm not going to get no amen. It's okay. God can't feel that. No, no, no. God can't, God ain't on my clock. Don't he know how, don't he know what's coming up? Sung Chen Ra has noted how God feels and acts toward us does not from our ability uh, to be a certain way, but upon his fidelity to his own word, his unwavering loyalty. In other words, God is acting on his word. And when that comes about, ain't no time frame for him. Who you are and what you do has an impact. I remember Sister Joan and I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Sister Joan and I were walking into the classrooms and we were in the third grade room. And some young lady we were interacting with, we were talking to, say, hey, how are you doing? She says, good. And we're asking, are you enjoying the class or something like that? And she said, I am, um, are you enjoying, you know, the subject matter? She says, not yet. And it's the idea of yet. You get that? That yet ought to be a part of all of our vernaculars. Yet. We have Yet to experience the goodness of God and the answer to his prayers and the presence that he provides and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the perspective that he gives. We have yet to experience those things, but it's going to remain, these are part and parcel to the, to, the, to, the, to the carrying out of hope in our lives. Here's what we do when God can't be found. Number one, we find hope in him because we have learned to reframe, to reframe our perspective. Go ahead and remember what God did. Number two, we find hope in God when we remember his presence. His presence, his presence partners with us every single day, Alicia. Ella, listen, morning by morning, new what? Mercies I see. And then lastly, and then lastly, we find hope in God when we anticipate it. He's going to answer your prayer. He hasn't answered yet, <laughs> but he will. This is what to do when we what this is. What to do when God can't be found. This is sermon number one. And I went all over the place, but I do pray to God. That you get the meat of it. And spit out the bones. Every head is bowed as every eye is praying. Father, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your kindness. We feel compelled to sing just a verse of that song. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. And so on account of that, we ask that you would help us. Help us to gain perspective, to seek your presence, and to know that you answer our prayers. Help us to be patient and build upon the hope you instill in us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's go to our final song. We're going to transition quickly. We're going to sing a quick song and get into our time of communion. If you're an officer, come on down, come on down. Deacons and deaconesses, come on down, come on down. Come on down. Come on down with me, Tony. There's a fountain.
the Lord. And sinners blood beneath that flood lose all their guilty stains. Lose all. Lose all their guilt. Thank you, sir. Stains lose all their guilty stains, and sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilt. T stage. We're, we're, we're brought again to this table in order to celebrate the goodness of God extended to us. His kindness in this way. And we come this morning and every first of the month to remember. And the Hebrew is the term zakar, zakar, zakar. Remember, remember, remember. We remember because it makes and shapes us as the people of God. We have a history. We have a foundation with God. And what is it that we remember when we come to this table? We remember that God himself took it upon himself to redeem us. He made it as his own personal project. He sent his son, born of a virgin, born in a troublesome world, much like our own, to redeem us. So we come to this table to reflect upon the exchange of gifts, the fact that God took our, that Jesus took our unrighteousness and placed his righteousness upon us on the cross. This is what he did. And on account of that, we come to this table to remember anew the cross work of Calvary. At the cross, where we first saw the light, and the burdens of our hearts rolled away. Or like Horatio Spafford, who saw what had happened when his children had died in the water between New York and London. And it came to his senses. When we look at the cross, we come to our senses. We come to our, we come to understand. We gain perspective of what God has done and continues to do <laughs> in our lives. And so as we come to this table, listen to the words of Paul. I received from the Lord what I passed to you, that the Lord, when he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I can think of so many ways in which I like to remember things. I write it down. I set a timer on my phone. I make a reminder. I ask somebody to call me and hold me accountable. But Jesus says, be accountable to me by coming to this table. And Saint, if you're at home, grab your elements and meet us as we partake together. But when you come to this table, let us come with reverential awe. Let us come with sincerity. For the sacrifice Jesus made. What, and how is that? We ask God to forgive us of any unrepentant sin. Relationship needing repair. We'll do business with God by confessing those things right now. Mm-hmm. 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 God and our Father in heaven, we know 
that you hear our confessions. And we pray you will cleanse us to receive the elements, the broken body, and the shed blood of, of your son, Jesus. We ask for cleansing anew now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for these elements. Thank you for these elements and for what they represent in Jesus' broken body and shed blood. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing verse 2. The dying. We're going to administer the elements. Joyce to see that fountain in his day. Hey! And there may I, though vile as he, wash all my sins away. Wash all my sins away. Wash all my sins away the hell may I though vile as he wash all my sins away verse 3 dear dying lamb Thy precious blood shall never lose its power till all the ransom church of God be saved to sin no more. Till to sin no Bible says on that night when they had gathered in the upper room to eat this Passover meal that Jesus took bread and when he broke it he gave thanks and distributed to his disciples and he said take eat this is my body which is broken for you let us remember the Lord Jesus' broken body in this way And in the same way after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us remember God, remember Jesus in this way. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. May the church say amen. Say amen again. One more time for the Lord. Amen. Stand to your feet. Let's sing our doxology. Great God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below praise him above ye heavenly hosts praise Father, 
Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 God can be found in perspective, giving you perspective in his presence and through prayer. He can be found right there. So hold, that's how your hope is built. That's where he can be found. May you find that this week in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. That's where you find him. That's where you can find him. Let me get this out very quick.